Okay, here we are. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of uh, Between Two Teachers, where we talk about many exciting things happening in education. It's never a dull moment, never, never. So today is Tuesday, September 7th, and uh, my name is Consuelo Lara. And I'm Madeline Cronenberg. And I will begin with our uh, weekly land acknowledgement, uh, where we pause to acknowledge that we have gathered on the ancestral territory of Huchin, which is part of the unceded land of the Chochenyo Karkin speaking Muwekma Ohlone people. We remember the continued connection to this region and give thanks to them for allowing us to live, learn, work, and pray on their traditional homeland. We offer our respect to their elders and all Ohlone people past and present. And, you know, I wanna add one thing that we never touched on here about uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the way our history is taught and particularly with respect to, to the Ohlone people is, you know, the missions, remember when we taught missions in California? Yes. Oh, yeah, fourth grade, yes. <laughs> no more. No more. Oh, oh, that has changed. So this is all, you know, this is in this movement that, you know, it's in F the ethnic studies movement, but this predates that, where they went in and they changed the standards, the fourth grade standards, and, and basically said, we need to not celebrate the missions, but understand all of the thinking behind how they came to be and what the consequences were of how they operated. Yeah, yeah. So that. The, the mission projects have, have uh, are, are a thing of the past. Wow. And I think that's a, that just shows that what this, and that's what's gonna have to happen, I think with critical race theory, people have to move on and just say, yeah, you know what? We really need to teach exactly what really did happen. Now we really know, we find ways to be able to put this together to, to, to explain to our children what the truth is and teach that. Yeah, exactly. And you know what uh, would a good thing to replace that would be to teach about uh, the gold rush, because the gold rush in California, I mean, greed just took over people right. and there was genocide and there was just so much uh, people came from all over who right. wanted, they were just taking and taking and the racism, I remember teaching in fourth grade about um, San Francisco and Chinatown and around there. So it was just so much um, history there um, that all of that needs to be talked about. And how the, um, they talk about how before the gold rush, how pastoral it was. And that's part of the mission, you know, idea. Right, it was. It was right. Pastoral. And there was all of these, you know, and we have all these names of Spanish names of people that um, owned land, et cetera. And really, I think the, the turning point was the was the gold rush. Oh, no question. And because then, nobody would have come. No. All of these people that came, you know, they came because they found gold. So they all of that tell. went away. All of that it, went away. And it just became like a land grab and greed took over. So yeah, yeah. So the teaching the missions, no, that's not uh, well, you're still teaching it because it happened, but you now you're you're framing it differently, right? In this context. is all about the lens yeah. whose lens are we using here right? yeah. and that's the real the story of of history um the the other interesting thing that, that for this week around uh the same kind of thing how you're teaching history is teaching 9 11. oh really okay now that's a requirement in many states okay. yeah. and there's it's it's built it's built into the standards right? and how it's taught because it's a, it was a life-changing moment for so many people, for for in American culture, right? In, in American history, I mean, it's uh, the same number of people that were lost in Pearl Harbor, right? And it was a foreign attack. So how 9/11 is taught and the consequences of 9/11 is something that, that what happens is we don't automatically uh, uh, necessarily we don't have a national standard set of standards right so it, what you wind up with is certain 
certain states decided, you know, that were most impacted by it, certainly New York and Washington, Pennsylvania, where they were hit, they all immediately had it. And then they've developed it and they just had it as a requ it's required. Okay. And so that nobody is going to go to school and not have this big whole section on, on what happens. And for example, in, in other states, I grew up in, Cal in, uh, in uh, New York State, we never heard about the missions. Yeah. We heard about, if we were going to hear about, you know, missions or, or, or uh, uh, missionaries, we heard about the ones who were in New York State with the Algonquin Indians. Yes, yes. Right. And because history is local. Right? People want, want to teach their local history. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the I, I, this week is 9-11, and um, it, it, there is a, the NEA, the National Education Association, has curriculum for 9-11 that they put together. And so what's interesting is California doesn't teach it. They, district by district, they can, but California has not, as far as I know, placed it uh, in their, within their standards. And so that's an interesting fact, too. That hmm. is. That is. Right. And it's got to do, I think, with the distance, right? They're yeah. not, they weren't as impacted as if we were right there in New Jersey. New Jersey teaches it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh -uh. So, they are, so, so these are all the issues we're usually talking about in education, right? Curriculum and, and, and how and what children are learning. Yes. yes. But nowadays, we're really talking about other things because we're so controlled still by the pandemic. And uh, so there are all the issues around masking, mandating masking, and vaccinations, mandating vaccinations. And the many different issues that come with that. So if you're mandating, there are states now, you can divide them up, see who's mandating masking and who's mandating uh, vaccinations and who they're mandating them for. Some places are mandating vaccinations for all their staff and all their students. Mm. And, and if you aren't, if you're not willing to, if you're not, if that mandate means that you're not gonna be able to go to work or show up as a student if you're not vaccinated. Yeah. And then with that is whether or not you have, uh, what kind of mandates you have around masking. And there are states that have laws Everybody must be have a, a mask mandate, and then there are others that have laws that say you can't have a mask mandate. Hmm. Very complicated country we have, and that's why we we don't have control over this entire um, virus because we're not playing from the same playbook. We're not operating the same way. Yeah. In New York City, they're having a big uh, lawsuit. The teachers' union is concerned not that there was um, a vaccine mandate, but they're concerned about um, what happens with teachers who are not, who don't follow it. Is there an opportunity for them to do something else rather than just be fired? Right now, it's be fired. Uh, and so that's being litigated. UTLA, the board, their, their um, union board has voted totally in support of a vaccine mandate, but it still has to go to, well, we have to see, LAUSD has to vote on it, and then we have to see where, what, how it plays itself out, whether or not teachers and staff who were not vaccinated would be able to be put into some other um, non-student facing role, or if they would be, uh, if they would just be, be gone. Yeah, you know, oh gosh, when we bring this up, I just think about all those poor uh, school board members who have quit because they get threatened by these anti-maskers and anti-vaxxers. Right. It's just so wrong to do that, to threaten people's lives and families because they want to do the job. They want to protect children. They want to, you know, they've stepped up to do this service and they're just being attacked and it's just terrible. You know, um, I mean, this would not solve the problem, but it just seems to me, you know, children have immunization cards. COVID needs to just be added. All right. We have the same protocol that right. we always did. We send you home if you don't have the vaccine. All right, and or we don't enroll you. That's you right, know? we don't enroll you. You got to bring proof. That's it. That's right. how it's the done. Thing is, people it. don't know this. Teachers have to take their TB 
I was just going to say that. Same thing with teachers. You cannot go to school unless you got your TB shot. With me, I have to get an x-ray because when, you know, if you were exposed as a child, your skin test comes up positive and they, no, no, you got to go get an x-ray. They go get an x-ray and then right. pass. So yeah, again, that should be TB test, COVID test. That's right. It. Nobody ever thought about that. Nobody I mean, thought about it. Let's make it institutionalized. Yeah, this is that's, the that's the whole thing. I mean, that's the whole thing. And, and, and the same thing with masks. The same thing with masks. I mean, it, it, this is, it, it's, it's really become the number, the big, big issue, right? So we have databases now. And why does every, every uh, uh, district website have to have a database? Because you have to share out transparently whether or not you have exposures in your schools and your schools and your classrooms are being closed or whether they're being quarantined and how you're handling the quarantines. These are all brand new things in uh, West Country Costa. And I think they're just a, an example. I don't know anybody who's perfect and doing this without any hiccups because it's impossible. It's an impossibility to do this without hiccups, uh, which doesn't mean that you know, they can't improve because they absolutely can improve. Yeah. But their system is they decided that they would go ahead and do uh, weekly testing. Which not everybody's doing. It's expensive. You've got to find companies that literally were not doing. They didn't exist before. Now they do. And now they're having to do something they've never done before. Um, and then you have to figure out how you're going to post the results. So they're doing it through this company, um, Predison. And uh, the, at the same time, the school... Uh, staff, when you when you do it through Predison, you have to report to somebody else who reports to somebody else who reports to somebody else who puts a barcode on it, reports to somebody else. There's a lot of steps in between so yeah. that it's not an instant report. Yeah. The district or the teacher's union um, is getting an instant report. So if a teacher knows that she's got the results, she just sends it and posts it onto their uh, Excel chart. So you have competing information, wow. which simply which confuses people right they got to work together. and yeah it's it is uh, it, and that, and we're not the only ones i mean so throughout the state throughout the country people are struggling with this it's yeah. just a, a national problem yeah uh, schools are closing in california the schools that are schools that are closing because of uh, exposure are the rural schools yep where children are not vaccinated and a year ago or so, they were COVID free, thinking, oh, they're never going to get it. Well, then they didn't get vaccinated. Now they're and, and the variant came. And then the variant came as well. So then. I mean, that's really the thing that happened. Yeah, that's think about, you know, I mean, even we're talking about getting a third uh, shot and, and, you know, having it maybe be an annual thing forever. And it probably is because of the flu. This is just a version of the flu. There's no reason that I can think of that it's going to disappear from the it's not going to disappear it's here now yep it's, it's here, here. Okay. um so districts are, there there are people being fired the, the person who made the news this week was a superintendent in eastern oregon who'd been with his district for 14 years and was fired during a board meeting for obeying the state's mask mandate and not following the school board, which wants to not obey the mask mandate. Now, so that is where we are. Yeah. That is where we are. And so he's not, you know, he's not the only one who's uh, losing his job over this, but he's just, he's sort of a poster child for everybody. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then, uh, then the, the, I mean, the districts are, the other thing that's happening is, is the reassignment of teachers. People, there are not enough teachers. Teachers left the profession after last year, just like nurses. There are also not enough nurses, yeah. right? And these are all women. Notice those are the two professions that are female. Yeah. And these and women had to stay home and take care of their children. And women also are the caretakers for elderly family members. I mean, let's yeah. look at that, right? And and women, older women, uh, retired. They wanted to get safe. So you had these, all of those things come together. And so there's a shortage of nurses and there's a huge shortage of teachers nationwide. And what that means is teachers have to be, the teachers who get assignments that are outside of the classroom 
classroom support people, including in West Contra Costa, certainly, and throughout the country. They all have to go back in and find a classroom. There's just no other answer. You, that's what you have to do. You can't leave classrooms uncovered. Yep. You have to put somebody in there. Uh, and, that, and the process for doing that, of course, is also something that can be very controversial and you're changing contracts and you're, you're uh, having to negotiate it. So all of that is happening all across the country. Hmm. Yes. Okay. It is, it's a very, you know, yep. Yep. It's the, but it is what's happening. Um, and what was the, uh, well, you were gonna talk, what, what is happening at the, at the board? At the board, yeah, uh, we've got a conference coming up of county uh, boards of education. So that's in Monterey. It's both virtual and in person, which is nice. They're going to go through with it. And you just, you had to send in a copy of your, you have to be uh, vaccinated in order to go. So I think that was really positive. And um, it's, uh, you know, it's limited, it's short, and they're going to keep it spread out uh, for people, uh, social distancing, etc. And so I'll be bringing back the news from there. And uh, at the district level, I mean, the county level, we're uh, working on our uh, charter committee uh, meeting, our subcommittee. So that's coming up, oh, tomorrow, tune in. And we have the agenda posted. So we'll be looking at that. Um, I think that's uh, just about it for now. And uh, yeah, so. Well, the interesting thing that's happened within uh, Contra Costa is the, uh, we have, uh, we have California is a recall world right now, right? And we're waiting for the governor's recall next week. Yeah. Um, but there are two major uh, uh, school district recalls that, yep. that were looked at within the last week. And one of them is San Francisco absolutely going forward going forward okay going forward Mount diablo is done not. mount diablo they did not collect the yeah. number of signatures uh that that they would need to put it on the ballot so it is not going forward however the parents the folks this is one of the things for the folks involved in uh initiating the recall are very aware of the fact that people are running for office next year and if you went to the trouble of initiating a recall, you certainly are going to be active in um, uh, in that election, in the school board election next year. So I think that's something people can can expect to happen, and it certainly is going to happen in San Francisco, where they actually will uh, have the recall uh, sooner rather than later. Yes. Okay. Uh, then the other. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do is we're, we're really at the part here where we do our shout outs. Mm -hmm. And this week, we want to give a shout out to two board members who are moving ahead and doing their very best job of listening to the community. And here, let me see, I think I have, I might even have, no, oh, here it is. Okay. Here they are. Well, here I am. Yeah. There it is. There you go. They're at the table. We are the table. And it's Demetrio Gonzalez Hoy and Jamila uh, Smith Folds. And on Saturday morning, they're going to have a listening session for all the members of the community who have questions that they want brought forward that they haven't uh, felt to they have the answers too. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that great? Isn't that just, I mean, they're open, they're available, they're, uh, you know, accessible and they're listening and they're following through on so many things. So what, that's all people want. Parents, right. teachers, that's what they right. want. Listen. Right. And this is exactly what that looks like here. Let me just, uh, and it's on Facebook quite a bit. Uh, it's available, you know, the Zoom link, the meeting ID, it's all right there. It's all right there. It'll be, I mean, obviously it's right here. If you're looking, if you're watching us today, you're gonna be able to see the, what, the, what the Zoom link is because it's posted on our, on the, our thumbnail. Uh, and it, it's just an important 
it's I think they are really role models in in the yeah. fact that they're doing this. Yes, and they are. That's so I I, uh, I applaud them. I'm I'm excited for them that they're that they're doing it. And and I think the more uh, electeds are aware of the fact that that they can take control out of of how they uh, they connect to their constituents. Yeah. the better their constituents are served. Absolutely. Very good. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. So we'll hear from you next week when you come back and tell us about your yeah. adventures I do in Bonderay. Uh, people yeah. know that I facil co-facilitate the Concilio Latino and on uh, September 17th at nine o'clock we have as a guest speaker, the new president of our college, Contra Costa College, uh, Dr. Robinson Cooper. And she'll come and talk about her vision for, you know, for the college in our community. So that was my announcement there. So that's perfect. Great. Just just as uh, Dr. Hurst had done. Uh, yes. Uh, last month or the month before last. Month before last. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. All right. So we'll uh, see you all next week. Now I think we're going to be Tuesday people. I think that uh, between two teachers is probably going to now moving on to Tuesday is our day. So like look it. for us, look for us next Tuesday uh, and we'll see you then. All right. So long. Bye-bye.